So this is part three of the video sequence for working the total response example number two. In the last video, which was part two, we were able to figure out the impulse response of the system. Now we're ready to use that impulse response to convolve it with the input to find the zero state response of the system. So the zero state response is the input convolved with the impulse response. In this problem, in the first video, we were told that the input was equal to 10 e to the negative 3 t u of t, so that's f of t right there, and we're going to convolve this with h of t. So this equation right here is the impulse response that we found in the previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the convolution. If I do that, I end up with 20 times this bracketed term, so I have to do e to the negative 3 t u of t convolved with this, minus 10 times this bracketed term right here. So I really have two convolutions I need to do because this one signal was getting convolved with a difference of signals, so once you distribute it, you end up with these two different pieces. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to think of this as term one, and I'm going to think of this as term two, and I'm going to work two different convolutions. Once I know what one and two are, we'll piece it back into this overall equation to have the zero state response. So part one, I need to compute e to the negative 3 t u of t convolved with e to the negative 2 t u of t. So this is convolution, so I'm in the tau domain. So here is my signal e to the minus 2 tau. And then this is going to be the signal that I'm going to time reverse and shift. Originally it decayed to the right. Once I flip it, it decays to the left. And once I shift it, where it turns off will be time t. Remember, just keep track of the origin. So this is what e to the minus 3 t minus tau looks like. So remember, you just replace t with t minus tau. So this is what the two different signals in my convolution integral look like. This is where it turns off at time t, and that's important because depending on the value of t, I may or may not have any overlap. When t is less than zero, I obviously have no overlap because it turns off over here and their product is zero. When t is greater than or equal to zero, they overlap right here in the green. They overlap from zero to t. So for t greater than or equal to zero, the integral that I need to work adds up the area underneath the product of these two pieces. So it's going to be an integral from zero to t, the first signal, e to the minus two t, times the second signal, e to the minus three t minus tau. So just a little bit of simplification. I can pull out the e to the minus 3t because it's a constant with respect to tau. I add the other pieces. Minus 2 plus um, 3 gives me 1, so it's e to the tau. And now this integral is pretty easy to do. I have a constant times integrating e to the tau is e to the tau. Then evaluating it at t and 0 gives me e to the t minus 1. And I can go ahead and just multiply things through. I end up with this term right here. So this is the quantity 1 that we figured out by actually performing convolution. Let's do the same thing for 2. This is going to look very similar. I need to convolve e to the minus 3 t u of t with e to the minus t u of t. So I'm going to let e to the minus tau sit right here. So that is my um, non-reversed signal, so that's just that written down in the tau domain. And then my other signal looks just like it did before. After I flip it and shift it, the, where it turns off now is at time t. It used to turn on at the origin. Now it turns off at time t due to the reversing and shifting. So like before, when t is less than 0, there's no overlap, so I get 0. When t is greater than or equal to 0, they overlap in this green region, so I just need to integrate up that area. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to t, the first signal times the second signal. This looks almost the same. The only difference is I have an e to the 2 tau here now. So I end up with dividing by 1 half to account for that. And then evaluating e to the 2 tau at t and 0 gives me this, which I can multiply out and simplify like this. So this is term 2. So let's go ahead and piece these together. This is 1. This is 2. When I piece it together, I have to multiply 20 times 1 and then subtract off 10 times 2. So my zero state response is going to be 20 times 1 minus 5 times, you know, 10 over 2 is 5 times this quantity right here. And then everything has a unit step on it. So that is my zero state response. 
I can simplify it a little bit. Notice there's some common terms here, right? There's some three t's and three t's here, so I can combine those. So if I do that, just a little bit of algebra, I can get this as my final zero state response. All right, we're almost done now. We can actually finally go ahead and compute the total response. The total response is the sum of the zero state response and the zero input response. In video one, way back when, or maybe it was video two, we computed what the zero input response was, and it was equal to this. Just now, we finally completed computing what the zero state response was, and it was equal to this term right here. And note that I have some common terms. I have some e to the minus t's here and here, so those can combine. I have some e to the minus 2t's here and here, so those can combine. So if I combine like terms, I end up with minus 5 and minus 5 is minus 10. I end up with 5 plus 20 is 25. And then the e to the minus 3t's have no like terms, so it just comes through as minus 15. So this is the total response of my system. So this one took even more work because we weren't handed a differential equation and initial conditions, we were given a circuit, we had to derive a relationship, come up with an initial differential equation, use what we know about the initial conditions to derive the initial conditions we needed, and then from there the process was the same. Compute the zero input response, compute the impulse response, compute the zero state response, and then form the total response by adding the zero input response and zero state response.